Well, I'd like to welcome everybody here today. This is probably going to be a fairly uh, uh, short press conference, seeing as how we're having a conference without very much press here right now. So uh, we'll have a conversation with our PR guy after this. But uh, we are here to celebrate and commemorate the first time, and this is not just here at this location, but the first time the Penny Press has actually been planted as a potential cash crop in New York State. And uh, Pennycrest is important to innovation fuels. Our, we are a biodiesel company. We uh, are looking to vertically integrate our company, as we like to say, right back to the dirt, which is why we're here today, in order to be able to base our biodiesel on non-food-based feedstock crops that do not supplant <coughs> cash crops uh, that, are, that are based in food, soybeans, corn, that sort of thing. So we're not looking to take acreage away. The reason we planted this here in the fall, this Pennycrest wheat, uh, weed. It's a it's a plant, so it's moving from a weed to a domesticated plant. So it's somewhere in transition right now. Um, the reason we planted this is because we'll grow over the winter time. It will come up in the spring and hopefully go to flower and seed before we need to put corn or soybeans on. Probably before June 15th. That's our that's our target date at the at the last part of it. So we'd like to be able to run a combine over this field and and pull the seed off before that time, so we get back on the field and actually put corn or soybeans on here. What will that tell us? So that will prove the fact that we can actually double crop this. Um, this is an experiment. It's not been done in New York State before. We have six test plots across New York State in every hardiness zone. We've got one in Niagara County, one in Steuben, um, two in Washington County, and uh, one, one here in uh, Madison County, and one in Oneida County, I believe. And um, and the idea here is to see if we can actually double crop pennycrest. This is what pennycrest looks like when it's ready for harvest. These are stalks. You can see the little seed pods here. And these little seeds are very, very small. Um, but at 2,000 pounds per acre of these seeds and 36% oil, it equates to about 100 gallons per acre of potential feedstock that can be turned into biodiesel. That's a very important fact and very efficient oil feedstock crop compared to soybeans, which may yield 30 to 40 gallons per acre, it's two to three times more efficient. And the oil is a very high quality, it has a very low cold flow properties, which means that it's great for this climate. Uh, the oil that we've tested, and I have some uh, Pennycrest biodiesel right here, the, um, the cold flow properties on this are minus 17 degrees centigrade, which is very, very good uh, for our climate here. And we're, we're experimenting actually with some strains of Pennycrest uh, from some Canadian provinces that grow at very higher, uh, much higher latitudes than New York State, and we're thinking that the cold flow properties may even be lower than than, uh, than the cold flow properties of this oil. We are very grateful to Morrisville State College for um, helping us in this um, in this test trial in, 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 in planting this pennycrest and helping us out with some of the research. Uh, the Cornell Cooperative Extension has also been uh, been very helpful to us, and um, with a little bit of luck, uh, we hope that this will actually come up and be ready for harvest by mid-June next year and provide another revenue stream for New York State farmers and at the same time provide innovation fuels with some very high quality and high quantity oil that can be made into biodiesel. And uh, that's about the extent of the remarks that I have. I'd like to ask Ray Cross to come up and, uh, and give a few remarks at this point in time. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Joe. I'm going to stand behind the podium so I'll stay warm. <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Innovation Fuels, Joe, John, for working with us and for partnering with us. These are important times. As you know, the uh, budget isn't exactly uh, perfect. And uh, partnering with the private sector to do some of these things is very, very important. Secondly, I'd like to, I'd like to recognize uh, Professor Hennigan, Kelly, and, uh, and Mark, uh, our manager, and Dean Nyberg, Chris Nyberg, for uh, putting us together.
like you would plant something with minimal effort. The other part of it is how do you effectively harvest it? Uh, and Joe and I were talking about some of that this morning. And finding ways to harvest it, even though it may not be fully ripe, but it may be saturated with oil, uh, what can we do? How can we figure out a way to do that? And, and uh, in doing so, can we, can we effectively create a second uh, crop for farmers, a, a new revenue stream, while providing feedstock for wild food? The second part of that is the meal from this product is an unknown quantity. In reality, very little research has been done on the meal from this product. We know that it's uh, it's not uh, it's not perfect for animal use, particularly in dairy application. But there are a lot of other things you can do with it, and that's some of the stuff we like to mess around with. Those are my terms for research. Uh, so that's those are some things that interest us. <clears throat> we think this has a lot of promise if if you get past this very simple stage. Can we grow it in this climate as a second crop and uh, rotate it with corn and beans on a regular basis? We're very excited about that. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate you. Uh, your comments there and, and, and your help. I'd also like uh, like to recognize Tom Slade, who's here from the New York Farm Viability Institute, um, who uh, we have uh, we have just been awarded a, a grant to help cover some of the costs of the work that we're doing. We believe that this is going to uh, uh, be a benefit to farmers one way or another. And, and, and as Ray just said, we do have some some uh, ideas that we're working on if this uh, really doesn't harvest by June 15th in order to still be able to double crop it. So we'll uh, we'll try to perfect these ideas over the winter and see what happens in the spring. I'd like to ask uh, Representative uh, Bit, uh, Bit, Bill McGee to, to come up now and uh, give a few words and we really uh, appreciate you, you being here, Bill. Thank you very much and I'm very pleased to have been invited here today because uh, as chair of the Assembly Agriculture Committee we're uh, always interested in developing new revenue streams for our farmers and this, uh, from what I've heard so far, seems like uh, we'll do that. Uh, and uh, also I commend Dr. Cross, uh, Ray Cross, for, for his, uh, and the college, for their interest in uh, developing biofuels. We really must do that and it's uh, really a great thing when we can do it and at the same time develop another revenue stream for our uh, farmers who we all know are, are working hard to survive. So I'm pleased to have been invited by Innovation Fuels and uh, let's uh, keep watch on this and hope that uh, it's very successful. Thank you Bill. I, I, do, uh, I do appreciate everyone coming. Uh, I'd be open to some questions now if there are any. Or, uh, any questions at all? All right then. Uh, it's a little chilly out here so I'm assuming everybody would like to get back under cover. I appreciate everyone coming out for this and uh, We'll be back. Uh, we'll be back in the spring to see what this field looks like. Thank you very much for your help and assistance, and for coming out today. Appreciate it.